All right, folks, welcome to this, the sixth episode of Behind the Start Line. I'm your host, Eric Burnett, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Troy Schooley. Troy, hey. what's up? Hey. What's going on today? How are hey. you? I'm, I'm good. I'm super excited because today we have, I mean, I'm excited for all of our guests, but I'm really excited for this one because I feel like this is kind of like the heart and soul of what Behind the Start Line is all about. We're talking to the, the everyday runner you know, yep. the person, it's not the elite athlete. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the sponsor for one of our biggest races. It's, this is, these are, these are the runners. Everyday runner, great story. And I think that, you know, she personifies a lot about what we talk about here, that it's not always about running. She's, she's active. She's, she leads an active lifestyle right. Um, through different forms of, of activities, not just running. So sure. I'm super excited to talk to her and ask her some questions about how active she is and how she, how she honestly, how she does it all. Yeah. It's, it's, it's impressive. I mean, it's yeah. training alone for a marathon or a, or a half marathon is impressive to me because of the time commitment. Mm -hmm. And when you do things like cycling and Pilates classes, mm -hmm. thing, things like that, it's like, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to hear more about her. Yeah. I, I, I just have some notes here, but I, I can tell just from the little bit that I saw on her Instagram page, she, she is very active and she's got a lot going on in her life, but she does it. She's able to juggle these things and, and make it all work and look good doing it too. So absolutely. And talk about inspirational and she's, oh man, yeah. excited to talk to her about it. Yep. So many reasons to, uh, to check out our next guest. And I mean, why wait any longer? We might as well just bring her Let's on get right into it, now. Yeah. Let's get into it. All right, folks, we're going to head into our special guest this week. Um, without further ado, she is one of our P3 runners, which is an ambassador for P3R and all the things that they are about. And she is a perfect representative indeed. So without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome Erica Strasser. Hey. Hi. <laughs> How are Troy, you? Thanks I, for joining us. I also enjoy your shirt. I also enjoy the floral print. It's very Thank nice. you. Thank you. <laughs> this is a hit. Yeah. This is this, this shirt's a hit. I may not be a great <laughs> podcaster, but I can I can look the part at least. <laughs> I <guess. perfect. laughs> I remember on the first episode we both came in like wearing like snazzy jackets, all you know. Yeah, we've to, we've taken it. Yeah, it's it's went downhill since then, but hopefully Erica can pick us pick us up. Uh, I'm just wearing regular black today, guys. I don't know. I guess maybe first and foremost, how did you come to, you know, become acquainted with P3R? What brought you in this direction? Um, so I've been running the Pittsburgh half marathon for several years. I ran it several years in a row. Um, and when I lived in like Shadyside and Highland Park area back in the early 2000s, I remember watching the marathon go down Negley and I thought it was the coolest thing. Um, and I had trained a couple of people who were running that and watched them go by. And it was just, it was awesome because that part of the, the race is, is up there in the mileage, but people were still like cheering and, and rooting for others. Um, so I thought, wow, that's like a really fantastic thing. And then um, later on in my 20s, I was like, you know, I think I need a new goal for myself. I think I'm going to try to start distance running. Um, and so I did. And I got right involved with the Pittsburgh Half Marathon. And I, I've been hooked ever since. So that's yeah. so cool. You know, Erica does so much as far as P3 runners, but I think I'm even more impressed because we talk about this on the podcast all the time. Uh, you know, our goal as an organization, but just my goal and Eric's goal and, and everybody is just to keep people moving. I think that you're a perfect example of that because you're just not a runner. So please tell the world of all the things that you do. I mean, it's yeah. the resume from a, a wellness in a physical, you know, is unbelievable. So, so fill us in. Oh my gosh. That's really sweet. Thank you so much. Um, I, I do a lot. Um, I started out as a personal trainer and then from there I got right into teaching cycling. So I'm a certified spin instructor. Um, what? after that Me I too. taught, Sorry. are you? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love cycling. Um, and nice. then I taught actually at the university of Pittsburgh for several years, um, as a faculty member. And I taught to the undergraduate students. So I taught everything under the sun from, you know, strength training to, you know, cardio aerobics or whatever you want to call it. So I've done all of that. Um, and then I started teaching Pilates. And so 
my focus became heavily on teaching Pilates and the Pilates method in addition to running and really emphasizing um, how well they go together. Um, Pilates really builds strength from the inside out. And I found that when I started teaching um, and practicing Pilates, it not only helped me um, stay fit and stay healthy and well through my pregnancies with both of my children, but it helped me um, as a runner and it continues to. I use it as recovery. I use it as a strength builder. Um, I use it to relax. I use it to stay flexible. Um, and it's, I use it on my off days. So I'm a huge, huge advocate for Pilates and running. Yeah, Erica, I can definitely attest to that. I, I've never taken a Pilates class, but I feel like after what you just said, I, I probably should because I'm I'm definitely a, a runner who is more injury prone. Um, and I find that if I don't do any kind of strength training at all, even if I'm doing low mileage, um, those little nagging pains start oh, yeah. start entering right away. And I feel like you know, I ran with some guys in college who just like never stretched and they barely ever did strength training and somehow they made it. And I don't know how, but I feel like that's a very small percentage of people in this world. The most <laughs> percentage need something like Pilates, um, you know, or bar or something like that to, right. to, to strengthen them and to balance everything out. So what, so on every stride you're in sync and you're not doing anything to, to hurt yourself, you know? Exactly. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. I, you know, something that from the notes that I got ahead of time it, that really interests me about you is what Troy just said, how you, you do it all, you know, you are, you, you're that Pilates instructor. sounds like you still do. You're really into bar. Is that right? You still do bar every day, basically? Or is... I, I don't do bar to be okay. honest with you. I, okay. I teach Pilates and, and I do yoga. Um, okay. Yeah. Yoga has really been a, a big part of my, um, fitness, do you do um, Bikram training. yoga or oh, no. No. <laughs> too hot? Huh? <laughs> I would die. <laughs> yeah. It's intense. I love Bikram. I love the the method of it, but I just do your, you know, your hot yoga studios. I, I really love those guys. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Um, but like you mentioned, you're, you're a mother to two, right? I'm a and mom. Yeah. How old are your children? And I, I think I saw one girl. Are they both girls or is it a girl and a boy? So I, my daughter is turning 10, um, in about wow. a month. And then my son, he just turned six. Wow. Um, and I love them so much. <laughs> They're so great. I'm a single mom, so I do everything, yeah. um, on my own and, um, I'm really involved in their school. So I, I like to keep the kids motivated with movement and wellness. And so I teach yoga to, um, the kindergarten classes at their school. Um, and they're so fun. They're so great. And kids just want to learn and they, you know, they like the, um, stereotypical yoga poses. They love to show them to me. Um, and then we focus on the mindfulness of it. So we focus a lot on like, what do you hear? What do you see? What do you smell? And how to use that when you're home with your parents, you know, guys, like let's focus on being mindful and quiet. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So quiet being the key word there. (laughs) I try to help the parents out as much as I can. Um, That's incredible. Yeah. And I do, I was actually the, um, one of the assistant coaches for their cross country team last year. And that was such an honor. It was so much fun. Um, and I, I help the kids focus on the cross training part of running. And, and sorry, whose cross country team? Was this your daughter's cross country team? This or? was my daughter's cross country team. Yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. That's neat. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, obviously it seems like, you know, you, your kids are kind of following in your footsteps. They're, they're very active. It's, and so they, it's, do you get a sense that they look up to you as, as this athletic mom, as this like super mom? Oh, that's sweet. Um, I think so. I mean, my daughter has been a gymnast since she was 18 months old and she still is a gymnast. She's a avid swimmer. And then I got her into running. Um, my son, he likes to do hill sprints with me in the morning, um, after my run and I can't keep up with him. He's so fast. Um, and so they, they know, um, the importance of physical activity, also, you know, we practice a plant-based diet in my house. And so they understand the importance of staying hydrated, um, what sugar looks like. And my, my son just started talking to me a lot about protein. He's, you know, mama, this has protein in it and oh watching grams and things. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. That's, that's <laughs> wow. tremendous. At yeah. six. Yeah. He's that's great. Yeah. They're yeah. cool kids. Uh, 
that's a good sign because it took me a long time to figure out what sugar looks like. I knew what it tasted. <laughs> I knew what it tasted like, but I didn't know what it looks like. And it's a very, it's a very important distinction to make because uh, it's everywhere and it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, uh, and it's in mass quantities and so many things. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. Well, so what is your what's your full time job? What's your what is the career? What and how do you find time for it? <laughs> Um, that's actually a great question. Yeah. I have my master's degree in professional counseling. So I'm a therapist. I'm an addictions therapist. And so I work with um, behaviors and behavior changing. Um, and I incorporate that a lot with my health and wellness background um, because a lot of health and wellness is, you know, ultimately behaviors. Um, and so I focus a lot on changing behaviors. Um, I have people of, the whole demographic say to me, you know, I want to run faster. I want to eat better. I want to lose weight. I want to build strength. Then it all comes back to how are your behaviors? What are you doing right now? How can you change um, your behavior from the inside to enhance what your goal is? And so I do that as well with my patients. Um, and I right, right now I'm actually working from home um, and it's quite lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> sure. um, and so I have a very balanced schedule. And for a really long time after I finished my master's degree, I thought, okay, I'm going to dive right into just being a therapist. And fitness was always in the back. And then I thought, oh my God, I miss it so much. I have to go back to fitness. And so I, had, I took a hiatus from being a therapist and focused on raising children and just teaching. But then, you know, age creeps up on you. And my body was like, stop doing so much. And so I finally found... A balance where I am a therapist, um, identify as that, I identify as an athlete and as a runner. And I'm able to teach um, and, and be in health and wellness. So I, I like to label myself as having two careers plus That's being a mom. Totally. That's uh, great. My, the integration there is tremendous. I, I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's great. And I think Erica touched on it is how important, um, you know, fitness is for your, for your wellness and your brain, essentially, especially the times where, you know, Eric and I have talked about it a lot over the last couple of podcasts, the times we're going through now, they're difficult mentally on people and to have, you know, not just running, but everything you talked about, Pilates, cycling, everything as a release and as an escape, I, I think is so important. So that's great to see you're able to tie two passions into one, essentially. It's been my goal my yep. entire life. How can I do things that I love and, yep. and still be successful and not totally tired, you know? Right. Yeah. That's the truth. Totally. Well, that's, I mean... That's incredible. Definitely something to aspire to be Erica Strasser, who we want Thank to become. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> so, so you're, you're a Pittsburgh native, correct? You, correct. you're born and yeah. raised in Pittsburgh. Okay. Mm -hmm. What, what part do you mind me asking? Um, so I grew up in Penn Hills for a little while yeah. and then my family moved over to the West side where I am now. We live in Crafton. Yeah. Um, but I spent the majority of my adult life in the Squirrel Hill area. So cool. I consider myself a Squirrel Hellion actually. <laughs> right. I mean, and just from a runner standpoint, the Pittsburgh, especially, you know, right there in the heart of it all in Squirrel Hill with all the sidewalks and everything, it's just such a runner's city. Oh, it's great. Do you feel like that it being born and raised in that, in that part of Pittsburgh and spending that much time there has led you down this path of being so physically active and, and into running and, and athleticism? Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. I used to teach at the, the JCC in Squirrel Hill, right on the corner of Murray and Forbes. I taught there for so many years. Um, and I taught cycling there. I did some personal training there, but what was nice is that, um, the house we bought was a mile away. So I would run to my spin class, teach, and then be able to run home. Um, and it was nice having the kids, they would walk up, meet me and, you know, we would hang out and go to coffee tree and all the things you do in Squirrel Hill or go to the <laughs> library. Um, and so it was nice to incorporate them in that part of my day as well. So I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. So yeah. definitely living in Squirrel Hill um, was, it was probably the best, the best time. I do love it there. It's just where we live now. It's, it's calmer, it's quieter. Um, and I, it's more family. We like it here. You're in we'll the burbs. Here. You're in the birds yeah. now. Yeah, we'll stay <laughs> I, here. I can relate. Yeah, I moved up to Shaler area, so I did the same. The oh same. yeah, yeah, yeah. So where do you where are you teaching? Where's your spin instruction class now? Because I want to come. 
I'm not teaching spin anymore. Oh no! I know, I know. Once you know what? Once I left the JCC, okay, I was like, I need a break. My body has been through the ringer. <laughs> Erica, let's let's take it back to just a little um, P3 runner background, um, yeah, sure. just because I'm curious. Uh, so you talked about you you've ran a lot of half marathons, but what is your favorite P3R event and why? And I think that we've gotten all types of answers. So I'd like to see you know what your answer is there. Um, that's a good answer. That's a good question. It's a two part answer. Um, so I love the Pittsburgh marathon. It's my favorite. Um, I love the energy of the crowds. I love the course. Um, what I love the most, and this might be kind of selfish, but what I love the most about the half marathon is the route comes through the West end and it goes up Steuben street and then it turns left. Uh, or yes, it turns left, but there's a little alleyway and it's called Violet way. And my daughter's name is Violet. And so since, since living out this, this way, every year that I've run my daughter, Violet and my son, Sonny, they meet me on Violet way. And so I know like that, you know, schlep up Steuben street. Once I turn left, I'm going to see my kiddos. And, and it like, it's the best because not only is it a downhill, um, to that <laughs> sharp turn, but it gets like me super energized. And it's at the point where I'm like, you know, okay, halfway, halfway. You're halfway. Yeah. You're almost yeah, exactly halfway. halfway right there. Yep. Yes. And I love it. And so that's my favorite wow. part of that. Race. So Eric note that I can never change the half marathon course ever. Because or, of Erica. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to talk to, we'll have to talk to Pittsburgh city officials to never yeah. change the street. By the way, always has to stay. Unless right. you change well, it to sunny way. That's the only, that's the only other name. <laughs> that, that's, that's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then I, I love the EQT 10 miler. I, I love it. I adore that race. It's just so much fun. It's really a blast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many good ones in the, in the P3R calendar, but those are, those are two extremely good. Those are my two, those are my two top favorites. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. I wanted to say, you know what I, what I love so much about the the marathon weekend is that opportunity for the kids of steel for the kids to do that one mile. Um, I I think it's great. My daughter did it one year. I ran with her and, um, she, you know, she had fun. It was great. And she walked and I coached her through it. And it was just like really fun because we saw friends and, um, on the bridge, there was like someone dressed like Darth Vader and my son was like, Oh my gosh, Darth Vader. And so, um, <laughs> and they both have medals from it. And I think, um, they just really enjoyed that. And, and then there's the 5k and like the, the, the dog walk. Um, I really like that. And I also like the variety of races during the marathon weekend. So there's the half, there's the relay and there's the full, and I have done the relay before, um, and that was just great. I was team captain and, um, <clears throat> I was about 28 weeks pregnant with my son. And of course. so I, <laughs> my main concern was finding all the bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. <laughs> Sure. But uh, I did a great, I ran way faster than I thought I would. And I did that short leg and it was just like, it was so perfect because it was like, you know, really anybody can do it. There was really no excuse. So it was great. Well, so Eric, uh, you're the, you're our first P3 runner that we've had on a podcast. And so can you hey. take just to say, yeah, yeah, no, I think is perfect <laughs> selection. Um, can you give us, just talk us through a little bit about what it means to be a P3 runner? Um, I think it's a big responsibility. Um, I'm a representative of P3R, but I'm a representative of the runners in Pittsburgh. Um, I represent women who are runners. I represent um, the diverse community, the people of color that are runners. I represent um, moms, busy moms, working busy moms that are runners. Um, And so I am honored to be a P3 runner. I think it's one of the greatest accomplishments um, of my running career for sure. That's super cool to hear. Wow. That's got to feel good, Troy. Yeah, I, I, I love hearing that. Thank yeah, you for saying that. Thank you so much. Thank no, you. No, absolutely. For giving me an and, opportunity. And I think, you know, and Eric, we've talked about this, but yeah. I think having this ambassador group, these P3 runners, um, have done so much for our brand. And just to be able to, um, talk about not just the 10 miler, the marathon, but our other events and, and let people know that, hey, we, we have all these different, um, levels, essentially the fleet feet, Liberty mile, for example, like the P3 runners were involved. It's a mile. We want people to move. I don't care if you walk that mile 
jog that mile or run that mile. And I think what the P3 runners have done is shown, Hey, we're, we're, we're all different, you know, some are fast, some are, you know, 13, 14 minute milers. And it just brings everybody together. And I think that they, they've done such a great job of, of representing us um, exactly how we envisioned it from a standpoint of, like I said, I'm not a long distance runner. I can, I can run the Fleet Feet Liberty mile, but if you ask me to run the 10 miler, I'm not prepared. You know what I mean? So they, they've showed like the full gamut of, of essentially our mission statement. Our mission statement is to have any and all to move with us. We don't talk about whether you're a five minute mile or 15 minute miler because we don't care. But they, you know, they, they've incorporated that so well throughout their social media feeds and in their messaging. I think that we owe a lot to them. So, yeah, totally. I, give it right, I give it right back, Erica, because, you know, <laughs> you, you guys have done a great job. Well, hey, I want to talk about something real quick. Just, you know, you had mentioned that I think it was, was it your son or your daughter who swims? My daughter's a swimmer. Daughter's a swimmer. Yeah. You run, you taught yeah. cycling. Yeah. Are there, I was, I was a former triathlete. And so it's a triathlon in your future at any, at any point. Have you done a triathlon? I have not. It's on my bucket list. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, we used to have a Pittsburgh triathlon and then the HOV lane got, um, you know, know. but, but it's, it's set up now And Troy, I'm going to ask you this and, and you don't, you don't have to answer if you can't, cause I know you guys manage the Pittsburgh triathlon for about a year. You put me on the spot here. I put you on the yeah, spot, man. Yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. I know. But again, you knew it had to come from me being a former yeah, triathlete. Yeah, absolutely. And a very successful one. And oh. I knew you weren't going to say it, but you were, uh, Erica, he was like a world class triathlete. Um, I believe you, it. You won, our tri- you won our triathlon, right? Yeah. The, the triathlon. The sprint, the sprint distance. Well, yeah. who cares? I mean, it's still true. You still had to get in the water and uh, yeah. cycle and run. So <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter if it's sprint or Olympic style. Yeah. Um, to answer your question before you even ask it. Yes. Um, so yes, we did manage the Pittsburgh triathlon. Uh, logistically, it is the toughest thing to manage. I mean, it's even tougher than our 150 mile relay. Uh, mm-hmm. The reason is the water portion of it. Um, there's so much risk involved in the water, water portion when you're dealing, we had to deal with coast guard, um, local authorities, obviously like we do, but, um, we will not be doing any triathlons in our future. Um, okay. and frankly, you know, it, around here, it's tough to find water as well. So right. mm-hmm. what about a, to do be athlon. really honest, what about a, a do, duathlon, Troy? Duathlon, we've, we, we can, we can look into Run, um, bike, run. Let's yeah, do we, it. We, we've talked about it um, because Here. cycling is an important part. And I think it comes back to our mission is that we want people to move. So when right. I say move, I don't just mean run. Like, I mean, cycling. I'm, I mean, you know, kids playing basketball. You, you know, mm-hmm. we, we've had Derek on from our Kids of Steel program. He talks about how he incorporates movement into the schools. And a lot of it has nothing to do with movement or with running. It has to do with movement, whether it's a game of tag or a game of basketball or things like that. So yeah, we are open to that. I think the, the triathlon, the, the portion of the water is the one that we, yeah. there's too much risk for our sure. organization. So. Well, I remember there were, there were probably, there were at least two years in my memory where, where the swim portion had to be shut down because the quality of the water was just, you know, Pittsburgh quality. <laughs> It's their quality. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Eric. Yep. That's, so, yep, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah we're, we're, it's getting better though. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It is. Well, so Erica, would you do a duathlon with me at some point? <laughs> I'd love to. I so, love a challenge. There you go. I really do. There's so much fun. Very cool. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> some of my favorite just parts of, of any, of any marathon, most marathons do relays. And so I say that, but not all do, but if, when a marathon does a relay, it's just, it's, it's fun. The relay aspect, actually forming that team and having that camaraderie is, is so cool. And, and the, the relay aspect of the 10 mile that you guys created last year as well, being able to do that. I just think it, again, it's just more opportunities for people to get fired up about a race that, you know, you might be a little, scared to do in full 26.2 miles. I've never done it. I'm a little frightened to do it, but I did the relay, um, with the first year you guys were back in 2009. It's one of my best memories. I did it with my family and it was so cool. It was one of the first long distance races that my sister ever ran. And, um, you know, she handed off to me and it was, it was great. So yeah, that was a great year. 2009 was a great year. Yes. Yes. I, I loved every minute of it. It was, I was, and it, I think, 
I don't know if everyone really understood how big of a deal it was for the marathon to be coming back, but I think a lot of people did. And so oh, yeah. it was just, it was a celebration and it was really, really neat. There's so many people. It was fantastic. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's just gotten bigger yeah, the, and better. Quick story about that year. The project, and I wasn't here. I just know it's secondhand, but being here seven years now, I know the story quite well. When they first started planning it, the projection was for 5,000 people to participate, right? First year back after five being off data, looking at research probably wasn't as good as we have now, but yeah, we'll have 5,000 people. And then they kept taking registration, kept taking registration, ended up with like 15,000. And they're like, what the hell are we going to do with <laughs> yes. 15,000? And there's so many great stories because it's three times the amount, but like Erica said, and you said, Eric, like people were so excited to get back that yeah. they didn't realize that. I, I think internally, a lot of times, and we, we have a problem with this is that we're so close to it. We don't realize the magnitude of, of, of what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So they go to 15,000 and that year I, it was a Nike. We had, Nike was involved. They were ordering like different colored shirts because we order our shirts like eight, 10 months in advance. Right. So many people are registered. They're just like, give us whatever shirts whatever you can you give. We'll print them up. Right. Yeah. So there's random 2009 shirts out there in different colors because we just, they at the time just were just kept taking, taking registrations. Let's just keep taking them. You know what I mean? People want to run. Let's do it. So, yeah. So it's such a great story because I think it's, you know, it's, it's a great comeback story. First off, second off, it shows how, you know, deep this running community is in Pittsburgh and how loyal they are and how passionate and how much they crave to have these live events. So where I'm going with this is hopefully since we took a little sabbatical in 2020, 2021 is going to be unbelievable. Oh yeah. So yeah. It's going to be it's oh, gonna be a big one. Come, come back part two. Absolutely. It's going to be a huge, huge party. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. So Erica, what are your plans for 2021? Are you going to be doing the half Oh, for sure. I'm definitely okay. going to do the half. My yep. run partner, um, she's she's registered for the full marathon two years in a row. And last year she was injured, so she pulled out. And this year um, COVID happened, so she didn't run, obviously. Um, and so next year I feel like she's going to jump on the bandwagon for full. And she's always like, come on, do it, do it. And I'm like, okay. So I, I feel like I might do a full next year, to be honest with you. Will this be your first full Ever? Oh, no, no, no. I've run okay. a couple of fulls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're part of yeah. the, the real crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> super crazies. I super love the crazy. training. Not just the half crazies, the super crazies. Yeah. It's the training. The training is so great. I mean, I have a great running partner. I just adore her. And, you know, running is therapy. And so we get out there, we run, we just talk and, and gab and solve problems of the world and of our lives. And, um, and it's just like a really great, it's a really great few hours just to get away and, um, be with like a friend or be with, you know, yep. whoever yep. it is you're running with, be with yourself. Yep. I love it. One more question, actually two here that I want to ask this first one is something we ask all of our special guests We put okay. you on the spot. Oh boy. I feel like you won't have a problem. I think she's going to be, I, I have a feeling she's going to be really good at this. <laughs> I have what I have questioned previous guests just because we put them on the spot. Right. Um, I feel like she has an arsenal that's waiting for us. Well, I could just, I feel like you're one of the most interesting guests that we've had on the show. So oh I, I don't think yeah. that this, I don't think this will be a problem. So Thank it, you. yeah. What's, what's the one thing about Erica Strasser that we don't know that would surprise us something that's like, Whoa, what? So I actually really enjoy watching TV. Um, okay. You know, when you're an active person, people think you're like always on the go and not do it, you know, always just either you're running or sleeping or eating or hydrating. And I'm like, no, I actually really enjoy watching TV, but um, my favorite TV show of all time is the golden girls. <laughs> oh my wow. gosh. Okay. That's incredible. <laughs> it's, that's it really awesome. is. It okay. just, it's amazing. <laughs> How do you view it right now? Is it on Netflix? Is it on Hulu? Do you have like the box set of the Golden Girls? Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any Golden Girls memorabilia? Like yes. any anything to represent like a shirt or like a Blanche like bobblehead or something? Oh, she should. I have two. I have two Golden Girls shirts. I have a um, a Golden Girls um, face mask. It has Blanche on it. Nice. Um, I have the all seven seasons on DVR, DVR or 
DVD, and I do have every episode recorded on my DVR. Actually. Oh wow! Gosh, <laughs> oh, I and I do have those bobbleheads. I do, I do have the bobbleheads. I just I totally, I totally made that up, but I figured you might have them. I, no, amazing. I do. Amazing. The Blanche fa- face mask is a is a winner. <laughs> have yeah, you, it's amazing. Have you met any of the Golden Girls in real life? Like, got an autograph? Uh, have you been a total fanny and just? Oh my gosh, well, that would be spectacular. I mean, Rose is the only one that's alive right now, but um. That would be a dream come true. Did Betty White die? No, Betty White's alive. She's oh, the Betty, only one. Oh, B- Betty White's Rose on the show. All right, my yeah. bad. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come right. on, come on. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen Golden Girls, but I am familiar. It's the best yeah. show ever. It's my favorite. It's my go-to show when I'm feeling like any type of way. And I just, I love it. And my kids watch it. And, Great way know. to decompress, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so that's my, um, unless people are really, really know me, um, other people don't know that that is my favorite show of all time. These, these are the types of glimpses <laughs> into your personal life we are looking for. That is perfect. That's perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Erica. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, before we go, I just uh, wanted to ask, how can our listeners follow you? How can we find you? We obviously want to keep up with you as Erica Strasser, but also as the P3 runner that you are. What's the best way to do that? Um, I'm on Instagram mostly. Um, on, on my Instagram, I'm Erica underscore Strasser um, 40 because I'm I'm 40. But you guys, my birthday's in uh, nine days. So I'll be 41. Oh my gosh. Sure. I am following oh. you on Instagram. And she's a great follow on Instagram. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it, really, it, sh- it shows every, you know, we, we talked about Pilates. We talked about like being a mom. We talked about the the activity. So go ahead and follow her for sure. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to be talking about um, what I do for my birthday real quick. So what I do for my birthday every year is I do a long run um, and, or I do a heavy workout. And basically the long run is to represent um, what am I still passionate about? Like the older I get um, and running is definitely my top passion. So I encourage my friends or my um, community or my support system to run with me. And so this year I'm taking my group, the Pittsburgh Running Collective, and we are cumulatively running 41 miles. Wow. So it'll be cool. Really great. So I'll be posting about that soon. (laughs) Very cool. That's great. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. This has been really fun. Absolutely. Very cool, guys. Yeah. Erica, we're going to ask you just to hang on for just a minute. We're going to do a sign off here, but um, again, thank you so much. Our special guests, Erica, yeah. and, I, and I apologize. I've been saying Strasser. Is it, it, how do I properly pronounce it? No, you're totally fine. Erica good? Strasser. Yep. Strasser. Okay, perfect. Yep. Thank you, Erica, for Thanks, everything. Thanks, Erica, for joining us. Yep. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thank and, you. And, and Troy, as always, my co-host, thank you for just being the best just, I'm just here. And the best dressed co-host well, in the thanks. land. We'll see what we can do for next episode. I gotta raise my game. I we get Erica, you and I, this is it. We gotta go biking. We gotta go shopping for some floral shirts. We gotta have our dogs go for a walk. It's just we've got we've got you're, you're right, Eric, though. I, I've tried I've pulled the whole gamut here. I've had a suit jacket on, I've had a button down, like just normal shirt with you know, mm-hmm. I mixed it up and went floral. I think this might be the look. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I'm, More of a summary. podcast look. Yeah, summary it's look. Summary. All right, I like good. That. Look for me on episode seven. I'm going to try and watch. Absolutely. (laughs) All right, folks, as always, you can reach out to us at run with P three R on all of our major social media platforms. And please go ahead and email us at behind the line at P three R.org. There you can ask us any questions that you have. Uh, You can also comment on our attire on our guests, fantastic hair, anything that you'd like to, but just let us know what you're thinking out there. And you can also give shout outs to some folks uh, for some upcoming episodes that we might shout out. Um, Thank you so much for joining us on Behind the Start Line. I'm your host, as always, Eric Burnett. Until next time, have fun and keep moving.